Hi there. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> having some technical issues today. It looks like it might only be me today. So hopefully anybody that might be uh, uh, joining us, uh, feel free to um, say hello. One second here. Let me just straighten some things out. Uh, again, not really 100% sure what's going on. I know we've got uh, one fellow, Walter, that's actually in Dubai doing some business, which uh, you know we weren't expecting him. But uh, I don't know where the other two are. But anyways, you know what? I'm going to do this on my own. So uh, if somebody joins us, fantastic. If not, oh, well. And again, if you happen to be uh, joining in at the moment, uh, uh, feel free to say hello. And uh, this system actually doesn't uh, really uh, tell me who's who because I'm uh, actually broadcasting on a few different places. So uh, hello from Toronto. Uh, I know the area quite well. <laughs> I don't know who that is, though, but uh, if you could throw your name in there, that'd be perfect. And I know exactly who we're talking to. So this episode is uh, uh, basically it's a. Uh, uh, well, again, we're following Think and Grow Rich here. So this is the 12th step towards riches, according to uh, Mr. Napoleon Hill. And we're talking about the brain. And the first thing I thought of was we've got, uh, uh, well, we've got, uh, you know, Halloween coming up. <laughs> it started making me think of some kind of a horror film or something like that. But uh, that's not what this is. Anyways, uh, he says here, the brain is the broadcasting and receiving station for your thoughts. And very excellent uh, way of looking at this. Uh, I do know that notice that you know back in 1937 when uh, this was written, that I think that we maybe have come uh, high diamond from Toronto. Uh, I think we've come a little bit of ways away from thinking of just the brain as uh, you know the switching station. Uh, it certainly is, but um, you know our mind is not necessarily a brain. Our mind is in the brain. Our, uh, our mind is in every aspect. So again, it's uh, uh, I'm not going to want to suggest for one second that he is uh, incorrect here because he's not he is definitely correct uh, but i think that there may be some others uh, since that might have you know some different views along the lines but uh, anyways i'm going to just keep going uh, with this and hopefully again feel free to uh, uh, make comments if you like normally i would have somebody to bounce ideas off of here but uh, it looks like i'm all alone today so I'm just going to start reading some of this and I'll throw in some of my thoughts. Uh, normally we go for an hour and uh, it's not a real big chapter. So I don't know if I can get to an hour uh, all by myself, but you know what? I'm going to try. So anyhow, so he starts out by saying uh, more than 20 years ago, the author working in conjunction with the late Alexander Graham Bell and Dr. Elm Elmer R. Gates observed that every human brain is both a broadcasting and a receiving station for the vibration of thought. Uh, now, he also carries on here and says, through the medium of the ether, in a fashion similar to that employed by the radio broadcasting principle, every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought which are released by other brains. So basically, you know, what he's saying here is, you know, let's think about it again, it's employed by the radio broadcast, the same ideas, every human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought which are being released by other brains. Now, I think you run into that all the time. You could be, you know, thinking of something and then find that the person you might've been thinking about is thinking the exact same thing. I see it happen all the time. Like I'll, you know, just even the other day, I, an idea popped in my head that I thought would be good for someone that I work with. And when I got a chance to uh, meet with that person to bring it up, they had thought about the exact same thing right around the exact same time I was thinking of. So I think that that's very, very true. I've seen it many, many times. I would imagine uh, you know, anybody following along here probably has had that type of experience as well. So anyways, he uh, he goes on to say here in con connection with the statement in the preceding paragraph, compare and consider the description of the creative imagination as outlined in the chapter on imagination. Now, that's a great chapter. We did that a little while back. And uh, you know, anybody that might be following us on the Elevate Network, uh, you can actually get access to uh, the previous videos that we've done. We've uh, been going, uh, again, if you're only joining us for the first time, we've been doing them right from the beginning, uh, starting out with the first chapter. So the creative imagination is the receiving set of the brain, which receives thoughts released by the brain of others. It is the agency of communication between one's conscious or reasoning mind and the four sources uh, from which one may receive thought stimulus. You know, it's important to understand too that we're constantly receiving and sending information out into the world. So, and again, it's all by way of thought. It's a vibration. It's, uh, you know, you're putting out that vibration. And, you know, and along the lines of, uh, 
you know, we start talking about vibration, it makes me think of the law of vibration and attraction. And uh, again, you're going to attract to you based on things that are based on that vibration that you're sending out by way of your thoughts. Um, and we're going to get a little more into that. But, you know, again, it has a great deal to do with the emotion behind the thoughts as well. Right? So, Anyways, he goes on to say, when stimulated or stepped up to a high rate of vibration, the mind becomes more receptive to the vibration of thought, which reaches it through the ether from outside sources. This stepping up process takes place through the positive emotions or the negative emotions. Now, through the emotions, the vibration of thought may be increased. So again, you know, even when you're focusing on something that you want to bring into your life, you know. The more emotionally involved with that, the, the higher the vibration and the higher, uh, you know, the excitement that's going to happen around you, and the more you're going to attract to you those types of things. So let's get, say that again, like stepping up, the stepping up process takes place through the positive emotions or the negative emotions. Through the emotions, the vibration of thought may be increased. Now, again, this is more along the lines of the way I think of the mind, and that's why I was mentioning in the beginning that. You know, when I think the brain, I don't necessarily think of the mind. I think of the brain as being this amazing, magnificent electronic switching station. You know, it's the it's the place that you know all your physical senses are attached. Um, you know, I'm, you're seeing my hand move like this. It's my brain is telling my hand to move, but it's not my brain deciding to make my hand move. That type of thing, right? So again, it's he is absolutely correct in everything he's saying here. I just have learned it over the years a little bit slightly different, but again, I don't think that there's anything uh, wrong at all in what he's talking about here. In fact, I think if you read this entire chapter, it's, it's actually quite quite exciting. So uh, now it goes on to say vibration of an exceedingly high rate, or only vibrations picked up and carried by the ether from one brain to another. But thought is energy traveling at an extremely high rate of vibration. Thought, which has been modified or stepped up by any of the major emotions vibrates at a much higher rate than ordinary thought. And it is this type of thought which passes from one brain to another through broadcasting machinery of the human brain. Okay, so and he goes on to say here too, the emotion of sex, uh, we just talked about that in the, the chapter on sex transmutation. Uh, the emotion of sex stands at the head of the list of human emotions, as far as intensely and driving force is, con is concerned. Uh, the brain, which has been stimulated by the emotion of sex, vibrates at a much more rapid rate than it does when the emotion is uh, I don't know, or absent. Anyways, uh, he goes on again and say here, the result of sex transmutation is the increase of the rate of vibration of thought to such a pitch that the creative imagination becomes highly uh, receptive to ideas, which it picks up from the ether. Uh, now, again, when he's talking about ether, he's talking about like, you know, in my mind, he's talking about uh, infinite intelligence, or sometimes I like to refer to it as I squared, infinite intelligence. So, uh, so he's picking up from the ether. And on the other hand, when the brain is vibrating at a rapid rate, it, it only not only attracts thoughts and ideas released by other brains through the medium of the ether, but it gives to one's own thoughts that feeling which is essential before those thoughts will be picked up and acted upon by one's subconscious mind. So that is true. You have to get emotionally involved with whatever it is you're thinking about. It's going to cause you to take action. And that's really the key is, you know, you know, we've talked about this in other uh, conversations in this topic. Uh, even, you know, the law of cause and effect, like, you know, it's the actions that cause the effect. It's the, it's the actions that cause a reaction, and that reaction is generating the results you're looking for. But it can also be the exact opposite. If your emotions are tied around something negative, you may not act at all, or you may act in a way that's going to cause you to uh, see a reaction, a result that maybe you just don't want, right? So Now, he goes on to say, thus, you will see that the broadcasting principle is the factor through which you mix feelings or emotions with your thoughts and pass them on to your subconscious mind. Uh, the subconscious mind is the sending station of the brain, okay? Through which vibrations of thought are broadcast. The creative imagination 
is the receiving set through which the vibration of thought are picked up from the ether. Now this goes back in the, you know, again, I, I like to talk about higher faculties. One of those higher faculties is our intuition. And, and he gets into that in the sixth sense. And, and you know, this, again, there's more coming in the next couple of chapters, but and I think he talks about it here too, as a matter of fact, but you know, when you start thinking about this, like again, he says the subconscious mind is the sending station. Absolutely, but the sending station of the brain, okay. Uh, through which vibrations of thought are broadcast. Okay, the creative imagination is the receiving set through which the vibration of thought are picked up from the ether. Again, that goes back into what I was just saying about our uh, higher faculties and our intuition. So uh, what do I got? I'm looking at some of the notes here. Um, some of the things too that, you know, is probably not a bad idea to think about is, you know, those emotions also cause, uh, you know, that fight or flight type mode. That's why, you know, even, you know, I always recommend don't watch the news because they, all they want to do is seem to get you angry. And it causes us to react to certain things when, man, we don't need to. And, and when we get into the subconscious mind, I think you're going to you know, start to understand that your subconscious mind uh, must accept whatever it's given. And you consciously have a choice whether you're going to allow that information in or not. And by, again, I just use the news as an example. If you're constantly watching the news and they're constantly telling you that, you know, the world is coming to an end or something along those lines, then you got to realize, I think, that you are allowing that in. And by allowing it in, you're being conditioned to believe that whatever they're telling you is the truth. And, of course, you know, as you go through your days, you're going to find that, well, life can trigger a lot of this anger that has been built up through through this. So, it's very important to kind of guard yourself from all this. Uh, you know, the key is, is again, you know, why I, I tell people to stay away from this kind of thing is because, you know, it seems like their job is only to keep you angry and afraid. And, you know, when you're angry and afraid, well, you have a tendency to kind of believe whatever you're being told. Uh, so anyways, uh, guard your subconscious mind in those ways. Uh, let's see what else we've got here. That's, uh, he goes on to say the greatest forces are intangible. Uh, the depression brought, uh, he's talking about back in the early 20s, the depression brought the world to uh, the very borderline of understanding of the forces which are intangible and unseen. Through the ages which have passed, man has depended too much upon his physical senses and has limited his knowledge of physical things which he could see, touch, weigh, and measure. So again, he's talking about your, your, your five physical senses here. But the reality is, you know, if you want to have something different happening in your life. You got to really start to learn to understand your higher faculties. Like that's, uh, you know, your imagination, like I'm on the wall, your imagination, intuition, will, memory, reason, and perception. Uh, if you follow us on the Elevate Network, you might want to even go to um, the, the program that I created, Abundance Tuning. Uh, there are some, uh, I'm not sure which ones are up there that you can check out, but if you're a member, you get access to the full program. Again, that's my Elevate Network uh, dot um, com. If you go to abundance tuning, there's a whole chapter on uh, the higher faculties, and I think it's uh, it's definitely something that you want to take a good look at. I don't think it's talked about enough, although it's it's definitely um, you know I I really think that we're reaching a new level of consciousness out there. I think we're um, you know where minds are expanding. Uh, you know, some would say we're ascending in some ways. Um, uh, and, and it's because of the understanding of our higher faculties or in the use of our higher faculties. It's allowing us to connect to that source, that infinite intelligence, or, you know, I refer to it as God. You know, you can call it whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, it's something that always keeps in mind, like, you know, this book was written in 1937. And you think, like, here we are in 2022, and we've probably done more since this book was written than we have in our entire existence. Like, think about that. Now, if you go back two or three hundred years, like any kind of a change would take would take decades. Now, you know, six months later and everything that was we were following six months ago is now obsolete. That's how quickly we're moving these days. So these are really, uh, I think, great uh, topics, uh, great things that maybe have conversations around. And now, having said that, too, I don't know if the, you know, again, if you're watching this, uh, following along you might want to check out the, the elevate roundtable which is uh, wednesdays at uh, 3 p.m eastern and it's uh, just quite a few of us there's usually uh anywhere nine to twelve people that 
you know, we get together and we pick a topic of something and we discuss it. Sometimes we mastermind ideas or somebody's got something going on and uh, it's free for now. And uh, I'm not sure it might always be free. I'm not sure yet. We haven't figured that out yet, but uh, uh, maybe come check it out. You can find that at myelevatenetwork.com. There's a link there. You have to register for that because it's not done live. Um, and uh, if you're registered for it, we will send you a link to get on the Zoom call with us. So you're on the call with us uh, for that particular uh, uh, thing that we're doing there. Again, that's the Elevate Network. Or sorry, Elevate Network, myelevatenetwork.com. And it's the Elevate Round Table. So anyways, uh, he carries on here. He says, we are now entering the most marvelous of all ages, an age which will teach us something of the intangible forces of the world about us. Perhaps we shall learn as we pass through this age that the other self is more powerful than the physical self we see when we look into a mirror. Absolutely. I always love that. Uh, I learned this from Bob Proctor when he, you know, he pointed out that we live on three planes of existence. We're spiritual beings. We have an intellect and we live in a physical body. Now, again, you know, I've been talking about how our minds are expanding. We seem to be spiritually ascending in, in the way I see it, and that kind of goes into that we are becoming more of an under, having sorry more of an understanding of who we truly are, that we are spiritual beings, we do have an intellect, and we're having a physical experience. We're living in a physical body. Now he goes on to say here: sometimes men speak lightly of the intangibles, the things which they cannot perceive through any of their five senses, and when we hear them, it should remind us that all of us are controlled by forces which are unseen and intangible. And that's very true. Like everything going on in this world is happening by way of vibration and thought. And it's the thought that causes the vibration. So, you know, when he says that, you know, we remind us that all of us are controlled by forces which are unseen and intangible. The more you grasp that, the more you'll be able to, you know, kind of Decide what your life is going to look like. And that's the key is, you know, we get so caught up in how we've been conditioned to see the world that we can't really see the world for what it really is. You know, in uh, the abundance tuning program that uh, I was mentioning earlier, there's uh, the very first chapter is on reality. And the key with what I'm trying to explain in that chapter is the fact that, you know, everything in your world, everything in your reality is somehow your responsibility. You somehow and again, this has got nothing to do with blame or fault or anything like that, but you have somehow caused it. And when you start to really understand that and start to look at, okay, what is causing it? You start to realize that, you know, maybe you've been conditioned to see certain things a certain way, uh, you know, generally by way of the environment that you're growing up in or did grow up in, especially during your early years up until like age four and five. It, you really don't think for yourself before that. It's when you get to that age that you start to think for yourself, but you know, you're gonna think thoughts that were programmed into you by the again, the environment you grew up in. You know, your self-image is gonna have a lot to do with how you are treated. Um, your views on money, on relationships is gonna have a tremendous amount to do with the way you were conditioned to see the world at that time. So again, when you go forward in life and you start to think about your personal reality. You know, what relationships do you have? What are your friends like? What kind of income do you have? You know, do you work uh, at a job that just simply pays the bills? Or do you, do you work at something that is your passion? Are you an entrepreneur? All of these things have been conditioned into you. And the reality is, is down deep inside, there's a passion inside of you that wants to do something. And if you're not doing that, it's only because, again, you've been conditioned to see things a different way. So he goes on to see her. After He says, after this book has been written, or had been written, just before the manuscript went to the publisher, there, pe there appeared in the New York Times an editorial showing that at least one great university and one intelligent investigator in the field of mental phenomena are carrying on organized research through the, the conclusions uh, have been, sorry, through which conclusions have been reached uh, that parallel many of those described in this and the following chapter. Again, the text chapter is on the sixth sense. The editorial briefly, uh, editorial briefly analyzed the work carried out by Dr. Ryan and his association at Duke University to be what is telepathy. Now, I'm not going to read all of this in here. Um, you can see, again, if you uh, happen to have Think and Grow Rich and you want to uh, 
I would recommend that you go ahead and you uh, uh, read this and study it. Uh, this is, again, this is uh, uh, the chapter on uh, the brain. Uh, I'm just going to pick up some of the things that I've highlighted here and discuss that. And uh, again, I'm not 100% sure where uh, my co-hosts are, but uh, uh, doesn't look appear as though they're showing up today. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, I'm going to carry on with what I have here. Uh, normally, at this point, they usually have some comments. So, but uh, anyhow, uh, if you have any comments, feel free to throw them into the chat box there, and uh, I'll see if I can't answer them for you. Uh, so, this part here says these powers. Again, we're talking about telepathy here. These powers, assuming that they exist, do not seem to be sensory. There is no organ for them. And again, when you're talking about the brain, there's different parts of the brain that uh, you know they can point to that says this and does that and uh, uh, but again, when it comes to, you know, again, this is his version of things, uh, telepathy, where he says these powers, assuming that they actually exist, again, he's not even agreeing that they exist, uh, do not seem to be sensory. So it's not, again, one of your senses. It's not like seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching. Uh, it's something different. And again, that goes back into what I was saying in regards to uh, uh, your higher faculties. Again, we have six or yeah, six higher faculties, and again, imagination, intuition, will, memory, reason, and perception. So all of those kind of fit into what he's talking about here. Now, he, he actually, uh, over on the next page, he um, he kind of refers to that as, you know, being a mere hunch, and that other uh, extrasensory experiences, prophetic dreams, premonitions of disaster, and the like, may also prove to be part of the same faculty. So again, you know, he's talking about what I'm trying to suggest with your higher faculties is that it's not a sense, it's a gift. And that sense of a hunch or the telepathy that he was talking about earlier is a gift. And the more you start to learn how to use those gifts, the more you're going to be able to create your reality. You can create the life that you truly want. It's, you know, it's really important, I think, to understand that the answer to anything and everything you can imagine already exists. You know, it's a matter of tuning into it. Like as soon as you put a thought out into the universe of something you want, the how is here immediately. It's that subconscious conditioning that I was just talking about that causes you to doubt it, to think, oh, maybe that's for somebody else. When the reality is, again, if you follow what he's talking about here, you know, following those hunches, you're going to find you're being led exactly where you want to go. And if it's not exactly where you want to go, you're being led to a lesson that you need to get you where you want to go. So follow this. And, you know, something that's really fantastic about this, and I learned this from Bob Proctor, was study this stuff over and over and over again. You know, Bob would spend weeks just reading one chapter and sometimes spend days just reading one paragraph. And to the point where he, you know, he got it to, he completely understood it. And then, you know, we've lost him, unfortunately, in this last year or so, but uh, actually this last year, I guess it was January or February, I forget now. But there's a man that, you know, was so aware of who he was. It was incredible. You know, I had a fortunate, I was fortunate enough to be able to meet him and, and uh, study with him and, uh, I can't think of anybody else, certainly not in my life, that uh, understood this better than Bob Proctor did. So uh, I think following his guidance and studying this material over and over and over again is really, really a great idea. Um, you're certainly not going to uh, find yourself in a bad place by studying thinking grow rich over and over again. So, uh, let's see what else he says here. The mind responds to what he terms extrasensory modes of perception. I now feel privileged to add to his testimony by stating that my associates, associates and I have discovered what we believe to be the ideal conditions under which the mind can be stimulated so that the sixth sense described in the next chapter, uh, we'll be doing that next week, can be made to function in a practical way. So he's basically saying that you know, we can learn to use these higher faculties, to use these gifts, and really try to build the life that we choose. You know? The conditions to which I refer consists of a close working alliance between myself 
And he's talking about uh, two members of the staff. Through experimentation and practice, we have discovered how to stimulate our minds by applying the principles used in connection with the invisible counselors described in the next chapter, which again, the sixth sense, so that we can, by a process of blending our three minds into one, find a solution to a great variety of personal problems which are submitted by my clients. And so he's talking about a mastermind. And I'll tell you right now, masterminds are fantastic. And again, you know, I did mention already that we have the Elevate Roundtable. Uh, it's on Wednesdays. Uh, everyone's welcome, uh, but you do need to register. So again, if you want to be part of that, uh, go to myelevatenetwork.com. And you'll see a link there for the round table. And you just have to give us your name and email address and we'll send you the link to, uh, so you can join us on Wednesdays. That's at 3 p.m. on Wednesdays. It's not recorded. It's a private group. It's not live. Uh, you're open to say whatever you want and discuss whatever you want. Uh, so again, I, if you're really interested in personal development, I highly recommend that you uh, maybe come and join us for that. So. Uh, he goes on to say here, if you understand the principle described in the chapter on mastermind, which I kind of want to start talking about, you, of course, uh, recognize the roundtable procedure here described as being a practical application of the mastermind. And again, that's exactly what we have. We have a mastermind that we call the roundtable. This method of ma mind stimulation through harmonious discussion of definite subjects between three people illustrates the simplest and most practical use of the mastermind. Again, this all ties right into what he's talking about is, you know, that vibration, the energy between minds and that. Uh, I can also say that, you know, we're also tapping into that universal mind, you know, infinite intelligence. Uh, I know many, many times I could be talking to uh, clients of mine and uh, I'll say exactly what needs to be said at that particular time. And and I often think back to where, wow, that was actually pretty good <laughs> and realized that it wasn't me. You know, that came to me and it's because the person I'm working with and I are on the same vibration trying to accomplish something and we're tapping into an universal intelligence uh, that is using me to get the information to the person I'm working with. It happens all the time. So I absolutely know that what we're talking about here in uh, Thinking or Rich is true. Uh, I've learned it from personal experiences. And I think that you're going to uh, find it if you, uh, you know, sit back and really think about this, you're going to find it happens all the time, like all the time. Uh, the biggest problem I think that we have is that we're spending far too much time focusing on the problems and not being open for, to the solutions. And that's a big thing is, you know, somebody might be having some financial difficulties and they're focusing on, oh, I can't make my payments this month. When the reality is, is what we should be doing is focusing on the possibilities. What are the solutions? What can I do today that's going to make tomorrow better than it was yesterday? And you're going to find that when you focus that, when you put that vibration out into this universe, it's going to answer you. But again, when we get into understanding the subconscious mind, which again is in this book as well, you're going to find that your subconscious mind is going to try to talk you out of it because you're not conditioned that way. Like I know I've said it many times. It's like, even when it comes to money, I grew up in an environment where, you know, my dad, uh, uh, who's what we refer to as a skilled trade. He worked in a factory, but he was, uh, he fixed the machinery and things like that. Um, so it was a good job, but it was still a job. So as I got older, even though I kind of always been very imaginative and very creative, I uh, you know, was led towards, I need a job. It wasn't like I was going to be an entrepreneur and create something. Um, and I, I think I just said it the other day. I, uh, I remember being, I think I was maybe 10 or 11 years old and walking around a, a big a store, like a Walmart type thing. It wasn't Walmart, but uh, like a Walmart. And uh, grabbing something, I don't remember what it was, and saying, Dad, Dad, can I have this? And his response was, you know, Lee, do you, do you know how many hours I have to work to be able to pay for that? So again, right, he was instilling in me that you trade your time for money, which, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, a doctor, they trade their time for money. Dentists, lawyers, you know, a lot of very professional people trade their time for money. But it's not necessarily the best way to make a living because you know you always have to be working i think the way to really be able to do it if you can create something and cause it to uh 
keep paying you even when you're sleeping it would be the goal i think you know i remember again going back to bob proctor him always talking about how to take your annual income and turn it into a monthly income and it isn't about working harder it's about creating something it's about working smarter using all the gifts that you've been given by this incredible universe that we are part of um, so again by thinking about these things you really can create whatever you you ever want it in your life and that again it doesn't even have to do with money again like, you know, we're talking i'm talking about money right now because we're talking about thinking and growing rich and you know pretty much this entire book is about creating wealth um everybody that he interviewed were very wealthy people but being rich can can mean having happy healthy relationships could be living in a happy healthy body um being rich is just maybe being content and happy wouldn't it be nice to get out of bed in the morning and not have a single worry in the world see to me that's being rich um now obviously come <laughs> but money can help you with that though but uh anyhow so uh let's see what else he says here we're getting to the end of this particular part here but uh by adopting and following a similar plan, any student of this philosophy may come into possession of the famous Carnegie formula briefly described in the introduction. If it means nothing to you at this time, mark this page and read it again after you have finished the last chapter. We've got two more chapters after this. So, uh, you know, he's recommending you come back to this. And I agree. And here's something, too, that he pointed out. And kind of it's kind of what we're going through today. Like he was pointing out that the Great Depression. Again, keep in mind that you know this book was written uh, just after the end of that depression. So the depression was a blessing in disguise. It, it reduced the whole world to a new starting point that gives everyone a brand new opportunity. Now, I think you can say that we've just been through the same kind of an idea with this pandemic. Now, think of what we've gone through and the, how the live our lives have been changed. Now. Again, we could be focusing on, we could be putting all our energy into focusing on what's wrong, what went wrong, and, you know, what are the problems going forward? Uh, or we can take this as an opportunity to clear the slate and start fresh. Uh, I doubt that we're going to do it as a, a collective of humanity, but we certainly can do it individually. And you certainly can do it, you know, maybe in your own mastermind groups and things like that. Maybe get together with uh, different uh, people and create something, build something. Like, you know, again, I, I, you know, I'm mentioning the Elevate Network. Uh, that is a network that we're we're hoping to expand around the world. It's designed to elevate everyone's vibration. Um, you certainly can be part of it if you happen to be a coach. We're looking for more people that have coaching programs that they would like to include. Uh, if you just want to be part of it, you certainly can be part of it. We even have a uh, an opportunity there if you're interested to uh, you know earn an income from it you can uh, uh, you know markets uh, try to get people to want to join up and be part of all of what we're doing and if you do that then you're going to get income from it which again that's that information is on the site at myelevatenetwork.com um, I suggest you check it out so uh, there's a few uh, you know exercises here I've got I got lots of time so I'm just going to kind of go through some of these exercises and then I'll, I'll uh, I call it uh, call it a day. Uh, normally, again, I usually have people I can bounce ideas off of. And of course, again, if you're following along, you can certainly ask a question or put a comment in the in the chat box, and uh, I'll do my best to answer you. So, uh, in the discussion part of this, again, this is part of uh, the Elevate Network's version of uh, thinking or rich. So, uh, it says here, like a radio or television. The human brain is capable of picking up vibrations of thought being released by other brains, not to mention from the myriad non-human sources of ideas and information to which we are constantly exposed to in our fast-paced modern world. Operation of your mental broadcasting system, or station, sorry, is a fairly simple procedure. There are only three principles to apply when you want to use the broadcasting station. The subconscious mind, your creative imagination, and auto-suggestion. All three of those can be found in Think and Grow Rich. So I highly recommend it. So you know, I'm just going to go, there's only three questions here and I'm just going to say them and then, uh, you know, obviously think about it. You know, uh, you'll get a chance to watch the replay here if you want, or you can, again, go to the Elevate Network and uh, get access to this. And also, if you would like a PDF download of 
uh, the full book that I'm using, again, has those discussions and exercises in it. Uh, if you would like to have a copy of that, just reach out to me and I'll be happy to uh, send it to you. So the first question is, how might you use the information this program offers you about the brain to improve your mastermind group? Great question. Uh, the second question, what positive effects can you envision from the use of this information? How can you use it? What can you do to bring new information into your world? New information is going to guide you to the things you want. Yeah. And then the last one here is what steps can you take to avoid negative influences affecting the operation of your mental broadcasting system? That's kind of an easy one. I already said one of them. Let's turn the news off. Stop watching the news. They're not your friends. <laughs> And the other thing, too, is, you know, sometimes you have to distance yourself from people. You know, like it could be family. Another thing that you know, Bob said once, too, was, you know, if you, uh, the thing actually I was at a meeting with him, if somebody asked him, you know, what do you do when you're, you've got very negative family members? And he simply said that if you feel the need to associate with them, because, again, there's sometimes when, well, maybe you've got some a lot of issues in the past with family. Maybe you're better off not to associate, but let's assume you want to. Now, he would just say, just don't go as often and don't stay as long. Well, that would be the key. You know, just don't hang around. Like I, I had to find myself doing exactly that. Uh, you know, They're there. I care about them. I love them to death. I, uh, but at the same time, very limited conversations because... It's really messing up my vibration a lot of times. That's, you know, if they're not interested in knowing what I do or things like that, then they're not going to have anything positive to say. And I think you're going to find there's a lot of people like that. You can be in a working environment that really going to mess up your vibe. Right. So uh, I'm going to probably call it quits here. Again, unless somebody has something they want to say, send a message. Uh, you know, it's uh, we're a little bit short. It's only been 40 minutes. Normally we're here for an hour. Uh, we will be back next week uh, with the Sixth Sense. Uh, uh, he refers to this as the door to the Temple of Wisdom. Um, I'm just going to think of it differently. I think it's your intuition, not your Sixth Sense. Because uh, we have five senses and we have six higher faculties and your intuition is one of those. So again, this is just, uh, I'm not disagreeing with Napoleon Hill at all. I'm just saying it's different because I've learned it different. And I think that uh, a lot of what we've learned since this book was written, a lot of the new books that are out there talk more about, you know, your higher faculties a little bit more, uh, those gifts. And they truly are a gift. And, and if you can learn to use them properly, uh, you really can make a massive change in your life. And it can be pretty rapid. Um, so anyhow, uh, I'm going to let you go. And uh, again, thank you for anyone who has uh, uh, joined uh, me today. I was going to say us, uh, join me today. Uh, and if you would like to discuss further, feel, feel, you know, reach out, have a chat. Uh, I do offer free uh, uh, breakthrough sessions. There's nothing to buy. There's no obligation to do anything. Um, uh, no hard selling. I'm not going to try and convince you you need to work with me. Um, that's not what it's about. Uh, I do love talking to people. So if you would just like to have a conversation, reach out. Uh, say hello, and uh, I'll uh, be happy to set something up with you when uh, we're well, when we're both available. So, anyhow, thanks again for joining me, and uh, we'll, we'll be back. Uh, hopefully, not just me. Maybe I'm pretty sure all four of us will be back next week uh, for the sixth sense. And uh, we're coming to the end of this, so there really is only two more chapters left. So, hopefully, you can join us for both uh, the sixth sense, and then the last one is uh, the six ghosts. Uh, uh, what's it called again? Hang on a second. I'm just going to quickly tell you. Uh, oops. Six still sense, I forget. I don't know. Back in. Ah, never mind. I can't even open it up. Anyhow, I'll see you back here again next week. Six sense. And uh, you guys or whoever's here, you have an uh, amazing rest of your day. And like I said, if you want to have a chat, just reach out, say hello, and uh, I'll uh, be happy to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for coming. And again, see you next week.